It's time to experience New Mexico. Soak up the unique beauty and rich cultural diversity with influences from native tribes, the Wild West, and even Georgia. Oh, Keith. Check out one of their funky small towns like Pie Town or stop in Albuquerque as you road trip down Route 66. Learn more and plan your next trip at newmexico.org slash footballers. New Mexico, true. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from Draft.com Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, Jerry, 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 Jerry Jones. Cha-ching! You did it again. <laughs> you old so-and-so. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast for Tuesday, October 23rd, 2018. Waivers on the show today. News and notes, QB streamers. Yeah, that's Samari. <laughs> oh, Mr. Cooper traveling, leaving the Bay Area, heading to Dallas. You know, I, I will say congratulations to all the Amari Cooper owners. Um, last huh? week, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this is good news. If you actually own Amari Cooper, it's one of those things where you he couldn't hurt you last week, and he can't hurt you this week. You get the double buy. Oh. You get buy week last week, buy week this week. He cannot be put in your roster and 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 poop on your team. So, so congratulations. So yeah, he the system is sitting him for us at this point. Yeah. It is taken over. Um I find that's when he's best. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk about it. Uh we had the big Monday night game last night. It ended up being a little closer than some expected. It started slow. Uh but the fantasy points started rolling uh towards the end for some of the bigger names. Did you guys have any takeaways from last night's ball game? Eli Manning, 399 yards, one touchdown, and it was yeah. a last second <laughs> right touchdown. At the, at the very end, after he had already made two buffoon decisions, one to not spike the ball, two to, I don't know, quarterback sneak right into a pile of 10,000 men. Twice. Twice. Twice, yeah, I mean, back to back. It didn't work this time, but it's definitely going to work this time. It, but shocking that... A man can throw 399 yards. So I guess it was it was like a one-yard touchdown, right? Yes. So he had thrown 398 yards without a touchdown. That's 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 a feat. Well, they had gone, I believe, six or seven quarters without a an offensive touchdown of any kind. So they seemed snake bit. Even on fourth down down there, I mean, they had multiple trips into the red zone. And I think Eli Manning at one point was like one for eight in the red zone last night. So, it, look, it's a... You're happy if you own Odell Beckham Jr. or Saquon yeah. Barkley. Uh, Sterling Shepard had a monster game. You're not happy with Evan Ingram. No. But you had to make a decision this week to go right back to him off the injury. And I did. It was very disappointing. Yeah. Or wait, I guess. Uh, he did have one rush for 10 yards. But, uh, look, Tevin Coleman, 11 for 50 and a touchdown. Very disappointing performance for those expecting something out of Ito Smith this week. Ito Smith had seven carries for 16 total yards and two receptions. I thought he looked okay, but... The utilization was there. It, yeah. it wasn't the efficiency production. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of what we said last week, which is he's not a special player, but he's in a good situation. And the, the Falcons didn't score as much as... You would have hoped. I mean, this was, and, and I think that was a product of basically the Giants not scoring on the Falcons, forcing the Falcons to be more aggressive. So it became a little bit conservative as the game went on. The Falcons were up. They, you know, they they weren't they weren't pressured into throwing the ball deep. I feel like had the Giants been able to, you know, put a couple more touchdowns on the board, this would have been a great game. But it was exactly the fear we had going in. We talked about this. Um, was it yesterday of just will the Giants actually right. be able to score enough on the Falcons to make to capitalize on the be, on the on the injured defense of Atlanta? To be fair, for to Ito, Tevin Coleman was having an atrocious day until he ripped off the thirty-yard touchdown. I mean, the, the Giants were completely stopping the run game. 
That's true. He he would have been uh, 11 for 20 outside yeah. of the 30-yard touchdown run, and Ito wasn't any better at 7 for 16. Amar, uh, not Amari, uh, Mr. Hooper. Who? H- not Cooper, but Hooper. 3 for 48, just four targets in this game. You saw the return of Ridley and Sanu. Are you... Is this a return to earth from Hooper? This was his chance to be full NBA jam on fire for fantasy owners. Yeah, he's cooled off. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying you can't continue to low start end, Hooper. Low end, tight end one. But he's a low end, tight end one, yep. maybe even outside those top 12. Uh, you know, the, the Hooper pr- or Brait rest of season? You'd- Hooper. I would go Hooper just because I, th- I think you'll get more volume. Touchdowns will probably still be Brait, though. Yeah, it could be. The, the one target he did not catch was an end zone target. Yeah. So uh, what else from this game? Anything else? Matt Ryan, 31 for 39, 379, just one touchdown. He looked great to me. I think adding Calvin Ridley to that offense just, you know, that's why we've seen the the resurgence of Matt Ryan's fantasy value. I think that combined with the absence of Devonta Freeman, they are having a problem. Tevin Coleman, has he's been okay for fantasy. He's He's gotten it done, but I he he's has been not inefficient. looked. He, yeah, he's yeah. been inefficient. He has not looked great, and Ito is nothing – Super special, so I think that's forced them to throw the ball more. And and Matt Ryan has, I agree, he's looked he's looked really good outside of Week One. A lot of fantasy owners were excited at the prospect of Tevin Coleman leaving this season. He's a free agent, becoming you know the next big thing out there as a headliner. Has his lack of production this season with these opportunities? I mean, he's significantly worse this year than he's been previously. Sure. Is that uh, dynasty wise? If you're an owner of Tevin Coleman, do you have a little bit of concern here or minimal? Uh, he'll still be the the number two hotness behind only Le'Veon Bell as the, as far as free agent running backs go. Yeah, but people don't pay for him very yeah, often. Yeah, I, to not be part of a timeshare that is. I mean, Jerry McKinnon had that perfect situation. Yeah, he would. I don't expect Coleman to get a that you know seventy percent three down roll from anywhere, but he can. He'll still be the yeah, leader of something. Maybe. I could see him getting a Deion Lewis type of situation where in free agency he's signed to a team that has another back and he just goes and he's a continual part of a running back by committee. He has yeah. not impressed anyone this year. Isaiah Crowell situation too yeah. where you're yeah. kind of – Could go to Houston. Yeah. Yeah. Where uh, and Lamar, he would be, Lamar he, Miller went to. He would be very interesting in Houston. All right. Before we get into the news and notes, we have a few announcements. Oh, yes, we do. Oh. We got some exciting news yesterday. <laughs> Jason can't even breathe. Jason's soul is leaving that's his body. It's such a big deal. I don't think that's – from the podcast world, I don't think that's a good thing to listen to. I think that's a little scary. Yeah. It might be. That was weird. Are you ready? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Foot Clan, assemble. assemble. We need you once again, Foot Clan. Big time. We are honored to announce that we were nominated uh, for the inaugural iHeartRadio Podcast Awards. Out of nowhere. Yeah, we didn't even know this thing existed. They didn't know it existed. And uh, this will be a full-on uh, awards ceremony in January. We were uh, The company that we have in the sports category bought oh. five other juggernaut shows. Um, so this is a great honor to be nominated. Uh, we're gonna, a we're testament gonna need to you. the listeners out there. And believe it or not, you're in control. Yes. Because we were nominated, but it is a listener vote to see who takes home the inaugural Best Sports Podcast Award from iHeartRadio. And here's how it works. You can go to FootClanVote.com, and you can do it every day. Yeah, uh, correction. You need to do it Yes, every there you go, we Mike. We need you. We need you. So need you, you. you can actually cast five votes per day. And it's as simple as a few clicks at footclanvote.com. If you want to support us, if you want to help bring us that hashtag FootClan title in the inaugural iHeartRadio Podcast Awards, we would uh, yeah. f- very much appreciate we- it. It would say a lot for the fantasy football world because we are the only fantasy football podcast nominated. Um, With ESPN's 30 for 30 and Bill oh. Simmons. I mean, we're going up Col- against Colin the, Coward, the, the juggernaut. Pardon my take. Pardon my take. So, yes. Um, we I, need you, and, and we we appreciate your vote. It's easy. And, and when we say you can vote five times a day, there's one it's button. just this <laughs> button yeah. that says, like, would you like to vote five times? Yes, click it. So it's very easy. But obviously, you're going to set an alarm, a daily alarm, yeah, you know, from now till January 8th, and you'll just do this every day as part of your d- balanced diet. 
<laughs> you brush your teeth, you vote for us, you go on your day. Uh, you can also check out footclangiveaway.com, just one of the ways we keep uh, trying to give back to you guys. A signed Saquon Barkley jersey, now available. A uh, free giveaway. Go get it. Go yep. get that. Barkley's so good. He is. He's so good. Fantastic. Um, Who would you rather have, Alvin Kamara or Saquon Barkley? Are we talking about real life football or fantasy no, football? No, I'm uh, fantasy football. I think. Wow, it's. I think I'll take. It's still Kamara for me. It's Saquon to me, and it's not that close. It's because Ooh. the guaranteed workload, like he's getting nine catches a game, just like Kamara is. So it's I, I it's a matter I mean, of the Mark Ingram situation yeah. where there's yeah. no one in. I mean, obviously, it's, the it's New a Orleans, matter of the box score. There's <laughs> to never be looking at the Giants zero in the first, three in the second, three in the third. But no, that, that's. And and Barkley scored twenty something fantasy points. Right. Well, because he got the touchdown at the very end of the game. But that's happened every week. That I I get what Jason's saying because there's never going to be a oh it was a Wayne Gallman week. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, but you might say that with Alvin Kamara. He cannot be game scripted out. Yeah. If they're losing, he it's, gets that's fair. Ten receptions. If they're winning, he's the reason. He's doing everything fair we point. wish David Johnson was doing on a bad offense. Yeah. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Well, they did it. Congratulations, John. Yeah, what do you have to say about uh, the the wheeling and dealing, John Gruden? What do you? Uh, this one is great. Yeah, this this one is fantastic. It was floated out last week that the Raiders were going to want a first round draft pick for Amari Cooper, and the entire fantasy football Twitter. Laughed hysterically. Not bloody likely. <laughs> but we forgot. We forgot about Jerry Jones. I called it. Yeah, Brooks, yeah. you Brooks, did. Brooks is a uh, diehard Dallas fan. How do you feel, Brooks? Are you excited about this opportunity with the uh, Amari Cooper going into the fifth-year option? Well, considering the Patriots got Josh Gordon for a fifth. This, uh, yeah. yeah. To, to be fair, Josh Gordon is not under contract next year. Amari Cooper is, though, for... Fourteen million dollars. <laughs> I so, saw Adam Schefter tweet for out, one year. Like the the defense of the Cowboys, <laughs> right? He's he's six months older than Calvin Ridley. Hey, he's only twenty four. Two time Pro Bowler or whatever. He's tw he's young, and they and they've got this. But when you actually look at what he said, it was okay. So he's still older than a first round pick. He's far more far more expensive uh, than than the actual pick, and. He has been okay. I mean, I get the 2,000-yard seasons when he wasn't the guy. When he was That would be two, two separate 1,000-yard seasons, not a 2,000-yard season. <laughs> That's, if he had a 2,000-yard season, uh, then I'm, all, I'm on board. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's it, the case. I'll make the case. For, we'll talk about fantasy value right now. So do you guys be percolating your projections, trying to decide whether he's a wide receiver five or six? Um Here's the case for Amari Cooper. You you ready for this, Brooks? Do you want the the reasons why this is a good deal? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the actual truth. If getting Amari Cooper is enough to let Dallas evaluate Dak Prescott for a long-term deal, if they feel like cuz the excuse could be there that Dak doesn't have like they took away his wide receiver one, he doesn't have the weapons to be evaluated. You have Zeke, but he's not a He's not a wide receiver, and you have a, a you know a rookie out there, a Cole Beasley, and no one else. So if the excuse can be made that, look, you get a, a number one pick, a top 10 wide receiver, he's 24 years old, now you get to decide on Dak, maybe you save money in the long term because you don't throw $100 million at Dak Prescott. Yeah, and, and the reality is Dak Prescott is an inaccurate quarterback who Des Bryant last season, I believe, was better than Amari Cooper this season. If you're just talking about those two human beings in a vacuum as a wide receiver, their abilities, their routes, their 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 skill sets. In a Hoover. And and uh <laughs> and Des Bryant Why wasn't was that funny to me. I don't know. And Des Bryant wasn't all that valuable. Right. Now you've got Amari Cooper coming over and he's never run a route with Dak in his life. So if you think this is just gonna be magic you know, right out the gate, I, I think you're you're fooling yourself. If I have Amari Cooper, we oh, talked about sell, this. Oh, sell, baby. Yes, I would be selling because a lot of people are going to be all about it. Hey, he's going to where he's completely the guy. Uh, he just was. <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, Dak really needs him. Dak's, 
I mean, I don't I don't see a situation here where Amari Cooper is better than a uh, fifth boomer, grader, boomer oh. bust, boomer bust wide receiver too, which is pretty much what he's been. Yeah, and we've been selling him already. Yeah, I think this is a lateral move for fantasy value for Cooper. So, uh, yeah, to that point, this year, Derek Carr. Do you know how many yards per game he's averaging? I don't. Three hundred. Ooh, he's averaging two hundred ninety-seven point yeah, two yards lot more than Dak. per the game. Passing volume in Dallas is horrifically low. That's the problem. So you you have to have everything go right. <clears throat> and Dak is averaging two hundred and two. Now I will say yards this. per game. I do think it is good news for Dak. I, I don't I don't right. expect Amari Cooper That's to a good point. Uh, change things, but Dak has been fantasy relevant in the past. He's starting to run again more and more. We've seen that over the last couple of weeks. He's had some good fantasy outputs, and now he gets another weapon to just. I, I mean, look, uh, his number one wide receiver has been Cole Beasley. Uh, a rookie, Michael Gallup, Alan Hearns has been sucking yeah, on the it's outside. Better news for Dak. Exactly. I would. I uh, you know, Dak is now interesting to me as a streamer because he's got another option. If only they could call plays correctly there. That'd be neat. Uh, yeah. Raiders have placed Marshawn Lynch uh, on the injured reserve, which you know they traded Amari Cooper. They've lost Marshawn Lynch. Going yeah. hard after that. They're not one. tanking though. Definitely not tanking. When does Jordy get shipped back to Green Bay? <laughs> oh, you said that yesterday. I was like, that would be such a good, like, just, hey, they need him. I can see Jordy sitting in an empty locker room with a tumbleweed rolling by. I mean, there's just, it's full rebuild there. Yep. They have three first-round picks. So, if that was the goal, you did it, yep. John. Uh, Rob Gronkowski could be ready. Oh, this is great. Could be ready for next Monday night's game. Against the Bills. That's a problem. This is a fantasy football problem. You That's a problem. And you do not, not fair. play. You don't play Gronk this week. I mean, I just – I it, the fact that there are reports that there, – there were some that's like, oh, he he's going to need to miss some time. Some that say, oh, he'll be ready for this next week. But if you don't have that, unless come Sunday, it's 100%. He's practiced in full all week and he's good to go, which that's not going to happen. You have to start someone on Sunday. Well, what happened was Rob Gronkowski came down with back spasms on Friday, and that was unexpected. And it's not expected to be a severe issue, but he has a history of back issues. Do I, there is no tight end to play. There's Charles Clay, in right? Lo, right. Yes. I mean, so like I said, there is no <laughs> tight end to play on Monday Night Football. Well, let me ask you this. Would you rather next week start on a Sunday an Austin Hooper type of guy? and get, There's no way you have Hooper, though. Okay. If I had Hooper as the Gronk owner, Cameron yes. Bray. Okay. Right, that's that's the question. Is so, it, would you rather start a Cameron Braid on Sunday? I don't think versus uh, grabbing, grabbing Charles, Charles Clay. Clay and saying I'm gonna go for Gronk, and if I don't get Gronk, I'm gonna downgrade to Charles Clay. What's the difference between Clay and Braid? It's 100 percent based on the reports this week. I mean, it, there's no need to make a Monday con or Tuesday conclusion here. That's my opinion. Yeah, so, people aren't rushing to the waivers to pick up Charles Clay. He'll be no. There. Well, and 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 it's a matter of maybe somebody plays defense against the Gronk person in that case, but. Um, I want to hear what happens the rest of this week. Is he practicing in a limited fashion? Is he feeling fine? I think we might know with enough lead time. If you need to sign a guy on, you know, if we find out by Saturday that things are looking rosy, I'm rolling him out there as a t taking a chance versus, hey, maybe I grab three or four points from, from Charles Clay. The gamble's worth much more than three or four points. Right. Kenny Stills ruled out for week eight. Albert Wilson expected to miss multiple weeks. Waiver show today. We'll talk about the wide receivers in Miami. You did move over. I'm, I'm going back to okay. it. Yeah. Uh, Sonny Michel. Adam Schefter reported he avoided structural damage in the knee in his week to week. Great news. Yeah. Uh, best case scenario for the way that injury looked. But, you know, not likely to be out there this week, right? I would assume so. so yes. We'll talk about Kenyon Barner as a supplemental yep. running back. Royce Freeman, considered day to day, uh, he reported. Reportedly suffered a high ankle sprain during the Broncos game. If you got a high ankle sprain, you're not day to day. Well, that yeah. you're week tell to that to Matt Burita. You're week to week. <laughs> Matt Burita was told he had a high ankle sprain, and he don't care. Well, he did. When, if you tell your, if you have a high game. ankle sprain, and you tell yourself it's a low Look, ankle sprain, don't it, start Royce Freeman. That's it, the point. Yeah. It's okay if you have a high ankle sprain to say maybe I should rest this. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, so someone went to Matt Breeder. They're like, this is normally a two- to four-week injury. Like, like it's, oh, it's I can okay. play this week? 
Um, all right, Doug Marone announced that Blake Bortles will oh, be. I got a snake, man. R- remaining as the starting quarterback, but on a short <laughs> leash. I thought that was his entire tenure in Jacksonville. Uh, oh just, man! Just get ready, Blake Bortles, four hundred and eighty-eight yards, six touchdowns. Seriously, you never know. Uh, he's you never know. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get into the main event, the waivers. Uh, we're gonna do it a little differently today. Always trying to make uh, the waiver show better, more helpful for you, so you can make some moves, pivot off of these injured players, and uh, steal a win. Yeah. But before we do that. I want to thank pristineauction.com. Pristine Auction is the absolute best place for amazing autographed sports memorabilia. What am I talking about? Hundreds of daily auctions, including, uh, look, some of your favorite players. Tyreek Hill signed Chiefs jersey yesterday. Sold at auction, $90.09. Antonio Brown signed Steelers jersey yesterday, $81.90. You want to pick up a little T.Y. Hilton photo? No big deal. $24.57 yesterday on auction. The catch is this. There's hundreds of daily auctions, and they're all certified, authentic autographs from the absolute best on the internet. We've talked about them for years. you got to check them out. Get yourself something nice. Get someone you know something nice for Christmas uh, because that's coming. So pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. Yeah, and Foot Clan, fall is here. It is the perfect time to upgrade or restock your drawers and i'm talking oh, about yeah tommy john mike knows stocking your drawers oh, with drawers stock them drawers with mine drawers. are overflowing uh and what are yours overflowing with mike is it tommy, tommy john? john oh mercy so look foot clan a little insight you know we get a sponsor sometimes the sponsor sends us a trial they go hey check our product out we want to see if you like them they send them out mike has replaced his entire wardrobe with tommy I john's i am on the way because they are unbelievable. You don't even wear pants anymore. No, they sport a no wedgie guarantee. Oh, you got to have that. Look, th- this is what it says, and and this can't be more true. They, they use a range of fabrics that are luxuriously soft, feather light, moisture wicking, breathable, and designed to move with you, not against you. They are the Accurate. best underwear you will ever wear. Best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. They'll d- do that. So look. <laughs> Hurry right now. Just stop what you're doing. Go to Tommy John, TommyJohn.com slash footballers for 20% off your first order. That's TommyJohn.com slash footballers for 20% off only at TommyJohn.com. TommyJohn.com slash footballers. Put me in, coach. Getting a little flustery with them drawers. Dude, they're so good. <laughs> yeah, I freaking love my Tommy Johns. All right, we're going to talk waivers right here, right now. A reminder, teams returning from the bye week, Green Bay, Oakland, what's left of them, Pittsburgh, and Seattle, what's left of them? and then the teams going on bye in week eight, Atlanta, Dallas, Los Angeles, that would be the Chargers, and the Tennessee Titans. And a reminder, as we talk about waivers this week, not only are those four teams on bye, but next week, in week nine, Uh-oh. there are uh, six teams on bye. Five why? Because why? Why not? But here's the thing. If Ridiculous. if you've got the space on your bench and you prep for week nine now, you get players uh, cheap. Yeah, You get wins. Especially week. if you're signing players from Atlanta, Dallas, Los Angeles, or Tennessee, the four teams going on by this week. If you sign players from those teams, you're probably not going to have a lot of competition on the fringes because – those players can't play and help somebody this week. Just a little tipsy. <laughs> Mike, Mike, you doing all right? I'm good, man. And, you know, <clears throat> just uh, I know we're going to start at wide receivers, but one thing we didn't cover in all the Amari Cooper news, we talked about Amari, we talked about Dak, but what does this do to the – I mean, look, he, he's one of the target leaders gone. Jordy Nelson is – more valuable now I know there's about like 35% of leagues that he might still be available in he's not a 100% owned guy but does this does this do anything for Martavis Bryant or Seth Roberts is it it does boost Jordy's floor to me because 300 yards a game Derek uh, Derek Carr's throwing for 300 a game I mean he's had some of these high yardage games and and we've seen Jordy have some success so is he in in your uh on your radar, would you want to go grab him? 
I would. I mean, he's the clear cut number one. As a what? As a wide receiver three? Yeah, I mean, I'm not or talking. Or are you talking yes, a wide receiver yes. two? No, a wide receiver okay. three. Someone that I think I can regularly put in my flex. Or if you're playing three wide receivers, regularly start. There's just going to be enough passing volume there. And he's going to be a, a, a primary beneficiary. He's had three double-digit games. The Seattle game was trashed, his last one, two for six, but the three games before he had scored in. So, yeah, something to think about. All right, starting at the wide receiver position, uh, main pickups this week, the guys worth talking about, and then we'll pick out some favorites. Let's start in Green Bay. You've got uh, Geronimo Allison, only 37% owned, was on the buy. And uh, Mike McCarthy has said that Geronimo Allison will be incorporated into practice today. He had been banged up. Randall Cobb's been banged up. And then Marquez Valdez-Scantling, only 8% owned, was on by as well. What do you guys think about the Green Bay wideouts, Mike? Geronimo is my favorite pickup of the week at the wide receiver position. Welcome back. He was close to playing this past week with his hamstring, but now he's had plenty of time to get it right. For Marquez... He's he's a very interesting player, rookie wide receiver. But with Geronimo and Randall Cobb back, the way that Mike McCarthy runs things, I would assume those guys are just right back into the starting lineup, regardless of how of how well and in what Valdez Scantling actually brings to the team. So it while he's at Scantling's an interesting stash, if Randall Cobb and Allison are actually healthy and fully practicing I don't know what the value is besides really deep leagues. Geronimo is my favorite pickup as well. Coming back to an Aaron Rodgers offense, being a player that they, they've they needed desperately. He's been great this year for fantasy as well. Yeah, but I agree with you on Marquez. Uh, thoughts on the wide receivers there in Green Bay, Jason? Uh, I echo what you guys say. Geronimo's my number one pickup this week, but I would also throw – how I, Randall Cobb's name because sure. you need to check a lot of a lot of places he's available. I literally just checked in our league of record. And I was like, oh yeah, Randall Cobb is available. So uh, you know you, he's a guy that you could pick up. And I know he had a couple bad weeks after that unbelievable week one. But in week one, he was you know a top wide receiver. He is still a guy that's got the rapport with Aaron Rodgers. It sure seems like since he's been since he's been gone. Uh, Thank that, you. You're welcome. Uh, it sure seems like Aaron Rodgers could have used him. Like he, he was, he was missing that guy. So I would rather have Geronimo on the outside over Cobb, but those two are who I'm looking first for first and foremost. All right. Uh, I think another pair of receivers is worth discussing. And those would be the, uh, couple of Williams there in Los Angeles, the chargers, Tyrell Williams, another monster week. He is the king of the boom play. Yep. He's averaging 15.9 yards per target, which is number one in the league. So he's at the at the peak of his yards per target. He has 920-plus yard receptions, Woo! which is in the top 10. By the way, Hopkins leads that category in case you were curious. Sure. Uh, but Tyrell Williams is the pinnacle of the boomer bust type of player. However, he's boomed twice in a row here. First play from scrimmage was a you know, huge touchdown, and touchdown. he's got the bye week. That's so. the, that's the main issue. I if he were playing this week, I think I'd take a shot. I really would because even though I'm not, you don't want to be chasing points, but watching the games and seeing how often you know he's going to, I, I feel like you know in the situation where you're always expecting it to be keen, and I'm watching the game and I'm going, eh, he was kind of looking Tyrell's way in the just in how the reads, not necessarily every target, um, but with them being on bye. It's very difficult, I think. I, I, yeah. I don't want to. Tyrell's not a guy I'm willing to be so confident in that I'll pick up and stash through a buy. So with uh, the Williams twins there, uh, I think I'm out. I agree. I'll, I'll maybe next week when next Tuesday I'm interested in picking certainly up. on all the buys necessary next week. Yeah. Now I know no one wants to play for them, but. Uh, as a rookie, he's obligated to. Christian Kirk, <laughs> wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, has San Francisco, Kansas City, Oakland on the docket for the next three weeks. Well, he's got the the bye week in the middle, right? Yes. Uh, yes, he does after after the San Francisco week. However, Kirk, four of the last five weeks, six or more targets. He has one of the uh, better catch percentages in football. He has the rapport with Josh Rosen, which – Hasn't translated to much fantasy-wise, but last week, 
three receptions, 57 yards the week before, seven, six for 77. How do you weigh out stashing a guy like Christian Kirk? Because obviously we've seen it at every position. A rookie evolves over time. More snaps, more targets, new offensive coordinator. Yeah, that's the hope. And so do, are you taking – are you interested? Yes, I am very interested. He's he's probably my number two behind the Packers. And the reason why, if you take out those first two games on the season, the Sam Bradford games where, uh, you know, it was completely different. Since Josh Rose has come in from week three on, Christian Kirk is on pace for 74 receptions and 1,078 yards. I mean, that's a – a serviceable player and you're disappointed in the touchdown count you know that's one of the things where he's he, his blow up potential isn't there but if you're in a PPR league a 70 plus reception thousand yard guy is going to be someone you can flex on a regular basis and as you brought up Andy look he's a rookie he's developing he's developing the rapport with a fellow rookie I the, I think the the trajectory will go up not down as the season goes along and if you know, the rumors bear out and Patrick Peterson's traded. That defense gets even softer. This is a team that's going to be forced to come back in a lot of ball games, which could mean garbage time help from Christian Kirk. Do you like Christian Kirk more than fellow rookie Traquan Smith in New Orleans, who had a very impressive, uh, th you know, he's only three for 44 on six targets, but he outsnapped Cameron Meredith last yeah. week, 53 to 18. You want to know why? I figured it out. Because Sean Payton's not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Payton, unlike somebody else, another dumb coach that might say, "Hey, I made an I had an obligation to Cameron Meredith with this contract." It's not that Meredith is bad. It's yeah. that, "Hey, let's put the most talented players out there that can make special plays." Traquan is in that category. I think Baby Josh is a big Traquan Smith fan. Is that true, Baby Josh? Smith's a good player. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's going up against Minnesota, which Oh, you're like, "Oh, crap. Vikings." Isn't that who Jermaine Curse yeah. just faced? He yeah, but here's the thing, Xavier Rhodes. Yes. Well, but I, we got to check, of course, on his on his injury. Oh, he's but gone. well, he's gone. I I don't know for sure, but I can't fathom the way that that injury happened and the way he was taken off the field. If Xavier Rhodes is back this week, I will I'll just be shocked. Sure. It, my point was, regardless, if if Rhodes is on the field, he's gonna he's gonna shadow Michael Thomas, which could open things up for Traquan Smith. If he's gone, the. <laughs> That's a huge upgrade for Drew Brees and the passing offense of the Saints. I would rather take the shot on Smith than than Christian Kirk. Now, it, the big play ability, better offense, the, the much better offense. Arizona's offense is, uh, I will, it's, it's the worst. In the yeah, league. you know what? I'm going to pivot here because honestly, what I was going to bring up was the inverse situation. You've got San Francisco for Christian Kirk followed by a bye week, whereas with uh, you know, so it was like, if you need a start now, Christian Kirk is the better option. I was going to inverse. If you don't need the, the start now, if you need it for next week's buy, then your better option is Traquan Smith. But I forgot about the Xavier Rose until you started right. bringing that up. And I think that will hurt them after, after that game. Uh, you've got new, uh, the Los Angeles Rams who are going to be able to score and have a, you know, right. back and forth game and the Bengals. So I, I love it. Breaking news. Huge news. Did we win? Richard Matthews. Richard Matthews has signed with the New York Jets as of five <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> Wait, did we? Are you talking about the podcast? I was just curious the if that had come out already. No, we haven't won in the in the 20 minutes that the, we've been recording and no one's been able to vote because this is being recorded right now. I voted. You voted while the show was going? <laughs> yes. Five times. <laughs> So, Richard Matthews signed. I mean, I might as well announce that news right in the middle of the wide receivers. Are you interested? Yeah. Uh, am I interested? No. No, I'm not either. I am. In Matthews or interested in Robbie Anderson? I am a little interested in Richard Matthews. Uh, not necessarily someone I'm picking up uh -oh. right now this week, and I know this is clearly upsetting Andy, but they need a, they need a wide receiver, and I do believe that Richard Matthews is a quality NFL receiver. So, uh, I'm, I'm not picking him up. I'm not bidding on him this week, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it. Right. Because if you asked me before the season, who's the best wide receiver of Quincy Inunua, uh Jermaine Curse, uh, T T Terrell Pryor, Robbie Anderson, Robbie Anderson, and Rashad Matthews, I would say it's going to be close between Robbie Anderson and Rashad Matthews. But for a guy that's not usually going down the field, Rashad Matthews would be the guy that, to own. So I'll keep my eyes on him, but I'm not. I, that, sure. Don't. 
you know, I'm not I'm not bidding on him. I'm not Yeah, you love him. All right. Look, I'm not legally allowed to talk about Jets wide receivers ever. <laughs> so I'm not going to chime in there. I would rather be <clears throat> stashing someone like Cortland Sutton than than Rashard Matthews. There's on a, the event that trades. There's the the rumors, the whispers from the bushes are coming in. You have to pick him up if he's on waivers. Have to. That both Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders teams are looking in. I mean, there was even a quote from Demarius Thomas saying something to the the tune of "My time is coming to an end in Denver." I mean, he knows he's he's a smart guy. Uh, so if, if one of those players moves on, Cortland Sutton is automatically moved up to the number two wide receiver on the team. He's already got interesting enough production that he. I, he's he, can, he can do things w even if those I, other two guys are still on the team. But if a trade happens, Sutton gets a huge upgrade. Yeah, I'm going full like uh, pump fakes and my pivoting. I'm continuing. I'm down in the post. I'm pivoting again after You've Geronimo. Traveled. You're traveling. No, You've same, traveled. same pivot foot. No, you I switch, switch pivot foot. You feet. switch pivot foot. <laughs> if are you are you just change? Are you just moving through? What to this the most might not recent be my last name? Pivot. Um, the reality is, while I like Kirk, I like Traquan Smith, their upside is not what Cortland Sutton's upside would be if one of those two guys gets traded. I don't agree with that. Really? Yeah, because, Tra look, if Traquan gets that role, you're the well, number... He's got it. It's done. Yeah, he's you're, got the, it. you're the number two for Drew Brees right now. So you have you still have longer odds that one of those two guys gets traded than, not gets, than doesn't get traded. And if they do get traded, Cortland Sutton's the number two on that offense... It's not Drew Brees. It's Case Keenum. I think I still, as much as I love the talent of Cortland Sutton, when you factor in the risk of a guy having to be traded versus Traquan already being in that situation, I firmly st I'm on the Traquan side. Yeah, Smith, Sutton, Kirk for me. Okay. Are you interested in Chris Hogan, Mike? Uh, <clears throat> six for sixty-three. Yeah, he's. We were. I was done with him two weeks ago. And that's when <laughs> when he finally started putting up some production. But it, I'll say this. If Gronk misses again, then then maybe Chris Hogan in yet another revenge game. Yeah. Jason, Jason, are you interested in Danny Amendola or Jakeem Grant in Miami with all the injuries to Albert Wilson and Devontae Parker yes. and Kenny Stills? I was hoping you brought up Danny Amendola's name. That's the one that I'm the most interested in. Six for 84 and a touchdown last week. Six for 84 and a touchdown, and their wide receiver core is depleted. depleted. I think that the two guys Michael that King. are going uh, – three guys will be the biggest beneficiary, but two guys that I'm actively looking at maybe uh, targeting because I think they're more fantasy relevant would be Danny Amendola, Kenyon Drake. But Jakeem Grant also stands to uh, have, a, have an uptick in his opportunity. Are you interested in DJ Moore, Mike, at all? He's David Moore? Any of the Moores? DJ, Jason Moore. DJ what do you think Moore of Jason? Is... I would not bid on Jason. What? Yeah. That is – Sleep because I'm already accurate. stashing you. Oh, Last man on the bench. Oh, my arm is. What is wrong with you? My arm is What's sore. What's wrong with your arm? I I worked out this morning, Mike, and oh. I, I pumped the weight. And he I, pivoted. He's been pivoting pivoted all over dude. the place. <laughs> He's track. Did you see there was this fast break uh, a couple days ago in the NBA? It's unbelievable. By uh, Victor Oladipo, way out ahead of everybody. Right, <laughs> he stole the ball. <laughs> and then decided, I'm just going to – dribbling is optional. He went slam dunk contest rules. Yeah. <laughs> and he just picked up the ball around the three-point line. Pivot, 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 pivot. <laughs> he had 20 pivots and then a slam dunk. And the other player who was chasing him down is like doing the traveling signal. Nothing called. It's just the ref goes, yeah, that was a pretty cool dunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> That's allowed. <so>. Um, <laughs> we, need to, we need to move on to running yeah. backs. but. Real quick, on those favorites, your favorites, Geronimo Allison, how much fab would you spend on him? Would you blow a waiver priority on Geronimo Allison? Geronimo Allison's the only guy I would spend up for. I'd spend 15% of my fab. Everybody else, I'm probably sitting around 5% of my fab. How I, much were you uh, – Mike, go ahead. I was going to say I'm with Jason for Geronimo, but I would be aggressive with Traquan Smith. Now, now that we've seen this play out, uh, the, the wide margin of, of snap, percentages, snap percentage for Traquan Smith, I'd go in on him. Uh, negative fab for curse. Is that the... That is correct. All right, running backs. Let's get into some of the favorites here. Look, Marlon Mack had the big boy game. He's only 56% owned, so he might be there. A lot of people stashed him through the injury. Didn't want to let him go. 19 for 126 last week. Yeah, was they were Buffalo. finally rewarded. It was Buffalo, but this week he has Oakland. So 
You, I mean, I, I think most people want to go grab him and start him. Is he your favorite pickup? Oh, 100%. I mean, if he's out there, I don't think he's in most leagues, but he's the first guy you have to check for. He, You'd blow your waiver priority. You'd spend up to get him. He's a starting running back on an offense that's going to be putting up points, whether it's because they're having a good game or they're coming back. I really and, – and I've said this from the offseason – I think Marlon Mack is actually a good player. It's nice to see that this is not a smash Jackson situation where Paul Perkins has opportunity, but he stinks. Marlon Mack, if he's given the opportunity, will be a productive NFL player. What? Who are you looking at, Mike, outside of Marlon Mack? Who are your other favorites? Uh, it's a it's it's a very light week. Jalen Richard gets the gets the bump with Marshawn Lynch. Out. He has a real opportunity. Yeah, with, not just with Marshawn. Amari, with Amari Cooper gone. You know, with yes. Derek Carr's inability to throw the ball beyond five yards but still accumulate 300 yards passing, I think Jalen Richard is a very – like, would you rather play Jalen Richard this week or an active Matt Burita not knowing if he's healthy? I would take Richard. I would take Richard over Duke Johnson. I would take Richard over Aaron Jones. I think Richard so is going to be – what would you bid on him? Uh, uh, Richard is my – that's who I feel is my number one because I don't I – don't, see Marlon Mack as, as widely a, available as widely available I would probably bet. pivoting off of Mack already <laughs> so far no travel one pivot um yeah I you know I I think I would probably spend 25 30 percent of the budget I'm not that's crazy. pretty big spend I'm not crazy about him but I think that's what it's going to take to get him six catches in four of six games this year at least six and that was those were games with Marshawn Lynch yeah yeah and Amari um, Cooper yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I think Richard is very, very interesting. And he's a talented enough player. You can do enough when you get a guy in space. You only need one or two of those receptions. I mean, you saw it last night. Tevin Coleman wasn't doing much. Got that big reception down the sideline. I think Richard's interesting. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, probably my favorite pickup because I will consider Marlon Mack to be majority owned. I agree. The Chris Ivory, you have to at least look in. We don't know what's going on with Shady's injury. Will he be back this week or not? If he's if Shady is going to miss, I mean Chris Ivory is going to see a ton of volume. Nineteen touches this Problem past is, week gets to play New England. It's a Monday night game, so I feel like Chris Ivory. Yeah, is a, you might be locked. Is a Lashawn McCoy handcuff. If you've got Shady, right. you must go get uh, Ivory. You know, trade for him if you need to pick him up. If he he should be on waivers in most leagues. Yeah, just go pay for him. If yes. you if you've got McCoy, yeah, go pay for Ivory and lock that up. Agreed. Now, what about the Colonel? Yeah, Colonel Mustard. Colonel Mustard. Raheem Mostert, 13% owned last week. Stepped in for Burita, 7 for 59, 4 for 19 through the air. Had some juice, seven, uh, 6.3 yards per carry. Plays a really, 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 really bad Arizona team. Yeah, look, I uh, all year, if you have played the running backs against the Arizona Cardinals, you have gone away with a victory that week. A uh, smile ear to ear, and it's going to be no different this week. I think the player to own right now of the three of them is Colonel Mustard. And that's, you know, if I'm a burrito owner, I'm certainly going after the Colonel. And I, I'm starting the Colonel this week. So I don't see Colonel Mustard as a long term solution. Jalen Richard, rest of season, <laughs> he's Colonel got. Colonel Mustard so much. You're yeah. pulling a booger. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh don't, don't put that evil on me. I, I, Monday Night Football is un Showtime! Monday Night Football is unlistenable. You want to know what it's sucks? It's so bad. Other than just the Monday Night Football crew, is that Kurt Warner, like the the, the radio broadcast team it's is good. so good. It's really good. On Monday Night Football. On Westwood One, yeah. I want to go sit in my car. Yeah, Kurt Warner is so much better. I don't need the video product. I can't take the video it's product. It's real bad. I guarantee that they will clean that entire house out this offseason. Oh, yeah. It will be a whole new team. No, that's a napalm. <laughs> I'm going to start muting it, pulling up a microphone, and calling the game myself. <laughs> I like it. People would tune in. <laughs> we should do that one we week. Should. We should do a substitute Monday Night Football game. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can just hear Jay. Wait till Colonel Mustard's on Monday night. I would then... play the booger roll. Oh, you would definitely For play sure. the booger roll. I'd just role. do it a lot We're you on a little We'll put him on a little... We'll just yes. little, wheel you back. A just little a hover, shopping cart. A hover around. <laughs> but it's just the TV. That's <laughs> going the length Yes. Oh, that's good. I'm just have him panning down the TV in my... That's a projector. I got some room to move left and right. I don't even know if I want to be Witten or the uh, the color guy. I guess I'm Mr. Vanilla and you get to be Witten. Yeah, that would be the Good solution. luck. Here's all you have to do, Mike. Hands up. All your notes in front of your, uh, in front of your face are tight end notes. That's it. <laughs> Every single play. Oh, the tight end's in a good matchup here. I like Travis Kelsey here. 
Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right, going back into the running backs. Uh, I just want to make sure someone said his real name at some point in that race. I did. Yes, I, I said, did. Colonel okay. Mustard. Uh, Ro- Ro- <laughs> I had to make sure. Raheem Mostert. Uh, but if you look at this point, it's Colonel Mustard. Mm-hmm. In the conservatory. We can just call him the Colonel. In the conservatory with the candlestick. He. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, he's interesting. Uh, any thoughts on Professor Plum in uh, how much fast? Is, is that Alfred Morris? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Alfred Morris. Three layers deep. He's Professor Plum. <laughs> Brooks, you are responsible for this spiral by because, bringing that well, up. I like Mostert. He, I agree. He's got juice. Absolutely. But he, he'll he'll end up splitting with yes, Alfred Morris. Yes. All right. Aaron Jones could still be on waiver. 69% yeah. owned. So what? Leave him there. Yeah, he, yeah, probably do. Got to check out. Look, you got to check him out. Ronald Jones is available in the vast majority of leagues. He do didn't, you want to make a water bet, Jay? Uh-oh. Is this Aaron, Aaron Jones? I'm sorry. It's yeah, Aaron I Jones do. Really. Here's, here's the water it's, bet. I already know it. It's Aaron Jones, Marlon Mack, rest of the season. Uh, <clears throat> yes, injuries notwithstanding, yes. They all – because the thing is with Aaron Jones, the reason I don't like Aaron Jones is not Aaron Jones. It's because it's going to be a complete time shift. So if, if Jamal Williams gets injured, I'm going out and bidding everything on Aaron Jones. He's a talented guy. Then you should be I, stashing I, I'm him. Not a, I'm not sure. asking you to say that Aaron Jones has no value. I'm saying rest of season. You might make okay, this decision absolutely. on your waiver Either wire way, to, yeah, this week. Right? Hit the button. Because Waterbed. I look at them as both being parts of a potentially troubling timeshare. Hmm. And you're you right now. I think it's it's rosy for Mac because you're coming off a Buffalo game where they led the entire game. Sure. So I think it's a an interesting water bet. I'll take the uh, the better what I perceive to be the better offense, but we'll see. So Who's here's the better player. Here's the deeper guys for me at the running back position. Ronald Jones, and this is because there was a weird Peyton Barber injury situation where where Dirk Cutter even came out and confirmed it. We don't know what's happening. But they invested the second round in him. Maybe this is the the time that we actually see the team see what they have in Ronald Jones, and and then in much deeper leagues, you're talking about Devontae Booker, Denver Broncos. If Royce Freeman is going to miss time, he's already the two minute guy, the pass catcher for the team. He'll see a huge uptick in targets, and he's going against Kansas City. Yes. They're going to be trailing. That's when Devontae Booker is used. He'll be a somewhat startable asset this week. I like that. A lot of questions have come on uh, Deonta Foreman. Is this the time you stash him? Is this the time you trade for him or pick him up? I looked to trade for him this last week, and when I was doing that, because I was a huge Deonta Foreman believer, I know he's coming off a hard injury, I kind of looked at what is what is the outlook? What is the timeline? And when I everything that I could research and find out from beat reporters, doctors, everything I could see is that we're still a ways away from this matter. Well, I think they we're a year pull, away. Yeah, we very well might be. We didn't they didn't pull him up when when they could have once they do, the reason they didn't want to pull him up is because once they put him off the pup, they have twenty one days to add him to the active fifty three man roster and they don't think he's twenty one days ready. So that's like okay, if next week they pull him off the pup, they're thinking twenty one days from then is when he'll be on the active roster, and then it'll be another couple weeks before he's taking over. So you're talking about the season's over. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then although that division is a little bit wide open and they, they did win. Yeah, I mean the last couple games he might be valuable, but I'm just saying it now is not the time. You're gonna waste a lot of time with him. I want to mention the names Trenton Cannon. New York Jets. Bilal Powell has a neck injury. We don't know what's going on. I know Elijah McGuire is set to come back, but you he's at least worth a speculative ad in very deep leagues. And Kenyon Barner, who will replace Sony Michelle while he is out. Of course, New England might bring Gilly Gilly gumdrops back into the fold. They might who's Mike Gillisley? They might add someone else. But if they don't make a move, then that's Kenyon Barner's job. Are you interested in Capri Bibbs at all if Chris Thompson's out? No. Yeah. Washington, no. pass catcher. Yeah, I mean, he look, four for 43 and a touchdown through the air on five targets this last week. The wide receiver core is banged up going against the New York Giants. If Chris Thompson is out, I think Capri Bibbs is Chris Thompson has been out, and this is finally we've actually seen But it seen was the something. combination of Chris Thompson out along with all the wide receivers. So they got to pass to somebody. 
Give me 60 seconds on handcuff philosophy at this point in the season. Spencer right. Ware, Joe Bernard, Chase Edmonds, Malcolm Brown, Rod Smith, Wayne Gallman, etc. When do you start thinking about stashing now, the handcuff for the playoffs? 100% now. Spencer Ware is a one of those mustache. <laughs> All I can hear now is the word mustache. Yeah. He's a mustache handcuff in if something were to happen to Kareem Hunt. Malcolm Brown, as you saw that – when the, they did not need Todd Gurley, Malcolm Brown was getting all the work, was still successful for, for what we need for Just fantasy purposes. Such a purposes. great offensive line. C.J. Yes. Anderson, I think, would be able to succeed really? in that role. I do. I mean, if, if uh, I mean, if again, McCaffrey, it's a handcuff. So if, if McCaffrey goes down. I feel the same way with Gallman. CJ I mean, I think would, Gallman would just have a lot of targets. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, those are the guys. I don't think it's 100% now. Because of the bye week and week nine, I think it's going to be difficult to roster your handcuffs. So look at your upcoming schedule. It's different for every team. Go to whatever platform you're on, click the schedule tab. There's usually one. And look at what your team looks like and plan a couple weeks out. Because if you go, oh, I don't really have more than you know two ir you know irrelevant players on the same bye, then go ahead and stash them now. Otherwise, if you're going week nine, I'm going to need a roster spot. You know. If you're through the bye with the running back, it makes it a lot easier to yes. do. Yes. And now – I'll say this. I mean, all the players we're talking about right now, if I have Kareem Hunt or I have Todd Gurley, I would much rather have my handcuff ready to go than I think all the guys we've talked about this week. Real quick drop question circling back to wide receivers. Would you drop Corey Davis? No. I don't think I would either. No. But <laughs> if I needed to, I would. I mean, bye week's coming for up. For Sutton, for Traquan, for Christian Kirk? No. No. Wow. That's a really, really hard one. I would one. rather have Geronimo. Okay. I mean, yeah. Davis has had one big game but these last three weeks, despite you know targets and stuff. He's just not been good. T uh, Tajay Sharp had all the targets this last week. Oh, yeah. I don't know. That's a really hard one. All right. We're going to get into the streaming quarterbacks. Before we do that, let's talk tight ends. Who are your main pickups this week? Who are your favorites at the tight end position? Vance McDonald is my favorite ad. Coming he, off the bye. Yeah, he was... For the Pittsburgh Steelers, he was a tight end that I was willing to go grab off of the waiver wire. If I if I had a low-end starter and I saw someone dropped him for the bye week, I was willing to roster two tight ends and move forward with Vance McDonald. C.J. Uzama, he's interesting. The target volume was very low, but he gets to play Tampa Bay. He's my favorite. He's your favorite? He's my favorite. Andy Dalton this last week was complete primetime implosion. He sucked terribly he couldn't target anyone other than AJ Green and Uzama still had a touchdown this last yeah. week I think at home against Tampa Bay CJ Uzama is great Ben Watson is Are also chasing someone, the points of Ben Watson I don't know that it's chasing the points he's been an, involved enough in the offense three of the last six weeks he's been a top 12 tight end red zone targets three straight weeks caught the 500 touchdown from Breeze and if you look at his schedule they're all teams that can score on them Minnesota the Los Angeles Rams Cincinnati Bengals they, you know they're going to have to put up points in those games. Some are you interested names at the tight end position? Are you interested in Chris Herndon from the New York Jets the, two straight weeks with a touchdown? Yeah, the problem with Herndon, which is strange because he's been productive, like you said, for fantasy the past two weeks, the snap counts. I mean, they're going down. <laughs> We're going the wrong way from 66% three weeks ago down to 39, down to 33.8 this past week. The, I'm not the, interested. The team does not, <laughs> apparently not doesn't interested. like it. Dallas Goddard? No, nah, there's just Ed I, Dixon. Yes. No, I'm not interested. I'm not picking him up yet. He's just now about to come off pup. But I'm telling you, in a couple of weeks, Ed Dixon gonna be a thing. For, for you, he will. Yeah. Jack right. Doyle, are you interested in him at all? Because I, I am not. Not but. until after their bye. From what I hear about the injury, if he comes back after the bye, that's no lock. All right. Some. Uh, it's interesting too because it's not just Ebron who's been making plays as a tight end in that Swope, offense there it is yeah eric swope uh yeah but they just keep picking him up and dropping him yeah, off the team true. he'll be gone once jack doyle's back defenses some defenses for this week you oh. gotta look at new england hopefully you grabbed yes. them last week they take on buffalo arizona at home against san francisco san francisco is giving up the second most points to opposing fantasy defenses in football what if patrick peterson's gone well, then I'm well, – Would you still – He won't be gone this week. I think Arizona's streamable. It's this week or never, right? No, you have it till Tuesday. Okay. What about Kansas City and that pass rush against Denver yeah. this week? Kansas City I'm very interested in as well as Pittsburgh 
versus Cleveland. I think that's a great What play. about the other side of the Arizona matchup, the San Francisco oh. defense against Josh Rosen? I am Always. interested yes. in that as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's get into the streams. Full stream ahead. Sometimes we call this jaunting through the stream. I mean, it's yes. a very common phrase mm-hmm. when you jaunt through the water. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the only way I know how to swim is jaunting. Not really a stream this week, though. It's a little more of a... Was it a rushing so, river? It's so a sw- swamp. Oh. Mm, just kind it's of not, mud it's little, bogging. It's a little gross this week. Speaking of gross, I'm going to go with a terrible quarterback for oh, my streamer. Oh, come on. I feel like he shouldn't even be allowed in this segment. I thought that, too, but he's not that. 53% owned? That's... Look, half of the leagues That's he's available, old. and if you've been listening, he was my streamer last week. He Hopefully is you who? Him up. He is Mitchell Trubisky. I'm staying in. I mean, he's been on fire. His last two games, specifically at home, have been unbelievable. This game is at home against the New York Jets. I, I'm I'm staying in the flames with Mitchell Trubisky. He's still out there in half of your leagues. It's crazy. All right. All right. Well, maybe I'm cheating too then because I have Andy Dalton with a bounce back performance this week. All the reasons Jason just stated for CJ Uzama. He's at home against Tampa. I think Andy Dalton can bounce back in a strong way. Um, if you're he could looking, be dropped this uh, week. Yeah, after I was going to say, if you're looking at your waivers, you're like, man, I don't like any of these quarterback pickups. Mitchell's not there. I was like, just, just wait till wait tomorrow. <laughs> just wait till tomorrow. Andy Dalton will be there. He's, he's like, Andy Dalton's not available in my league. Look tomorrow. Yeah, drop it like it's hot. Yeah, I like those two guys, <laughs> but the the rest of it, man, you're just you're plunging right into the sewer for the rest of these guys because it's Derek, Derek Carr. Derek Carr versus the Colts. Case Keenum. No, I'm not playing Case Keenum that's, versus Kansas City. I'm I am not. I am not going to do it. Case it's, Keenum. it's at Arrowhead. That that's the biggest problem yeah. there. You you put that Kansas City defense back up in Denver and maybe. Maybe. I feel like I would rather play Joe Flacco. I feel like Jason didn't just watch Andy Dalton implode <laughs> at Arrowhead against this team. I believe that was Andy Dalton primetime. Well, Andy Dalton did not go into his like locker and be like, is this a primetime game? Okay, I'm going to suck tonight. Like Kansas City had played said a part. That for years. He's played a part in it. They played a part in it. Um, yeah, it's thin, though. I mean, you've got – Baker turned into a decent start last week. He Baker did. had you know, 26, 27 fantasy points. I think he plays just, Pittsburgh. I think he's a trap this week. Probably is. If you're, if, if you're looking to stream in Pittsburgh, they just they put so much pressure on the quarterback, and Baker has taken sacks yeah. like nobody's business. So who's your streamer? Oh, my goodness. My, uh, my official streamer. We need a drum roll sound effect on, on yeah, this show. Yeah, my official streamer is C.J. Bathard versus Arizona. And that's where we get the, the – instead of the drum roll, you get the, you get the rim <laughs> shot. No, no uh, you should have gone with the rim uh, shot. That's what I was thinking. This one, C.J. Bathard? It's C.J. Bathard. <laughs> Look, my official streamer is, is Mitch Trubisky, too. If Jason can do it, so can I. <laughs> Seats taken. This <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping on your lap, bro. Uh, hey, I like how you've turned the truth biscuit into just like he was your stream last week, he's your stream this week. Yeah. It's the whole like you don't have to let go of him. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if you pick hey, if you picked him up to stream him, you're in, yeah, you're in you're a good in, situation. You're in good shape and uh, you can play this terrible quarterback to fantasy success. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh that is it for today's episode. A reminder, head over to footclanvote.com if you want to help us out. We, uh, we always appreciate it, and you guys are what drives this show. Um, we spend all of our waking hours, uh, the ones that you know uh, that we're not thinking about, Mitch Trubisky. We spend all the other hours trying to make this show better, improve it, make it uh, something you love to make a part of your day each and every day. So we do appreciate everything you do to help support it, and we're going to keep trying to make it better. We're always listening to feedback, too, at the FF Ballers on Twitter. Feel free to provide that as long as you don't mention Jermaine Curse. Check out draft.com slash ballers. Get ready for the weekend for some daily. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.